Hey everyone, you probably heard that there is a haptic touch feature on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, but what exactly is it? What does it do and what it actually means? Let's just explain it in this video. Like I said, it is only part of the brand new 2019 iPhone models. It's not part of the older models, even though it's kind of a step backwards in my opinion. It is a display feature. You probably know that since the release of the iPhone 6s, we have a 3D touch implemented into, the, into our display, which means that the display on the iPhone 6s all the way to the iPhone XS Max is pressure sensitive display, which means that a different action is going to happen and it's going to be triggered if you press the display lightly compared to a firm press. Yeah, it, it adds another layer of user experience, it's a great feature and we all like it. But in the latest iPhones we don't have that and the 3D touch has been replaced by the haptic touch. So what does it do, what's the difference? First of all, it's trying to make you feel that it is the same thing, but it is not. It has a different name and therefore it is a different feature and I would say not a better one than the 3D Touch actually. Well, on the other iPhones, if you force press or use 3D Touch, you get a haptic feedback. It means that you get some sort of different vibration from a haptic or taptic engine, which is placed inside the iPhone. It's gonna give you like a feedback. It's not like a vibration, it is like a firm tap so you feel it actually. The haptic feedback isn't anything new, it is already part of the trackpads on the MacBooks, it is part of the Apple Watch, it is like a normal thing. But right now, with the haptic touch, we still have that. So, a haptic touch, in short words, is a long press accompanied by the haptic feedback which means that it's trying to mimic the look and feel of the 3D Touch. It has the same effects and the same actions, the same things can be triggered using it, but instead of the firm press, and instead of really pressing harder on the display to trigger that action, you're only using a long press. So just, you just place your finger on an icon and you get the 3D Touch icons. But because it is a haptic touch, you also get a haptic feedback. So like I said, they are trying to make you feel and persuade you that you really are using the 3D touch even though you are not. I made a special dedicated video just talking about the 3D touch and there I go deep into the things that have been changed and what, are, what it actually means for you, how the iOS 13 has changed the way the 3D touch performs and behaves. Oh, by the way, I want to say that if you are new here on this channel, if this is the first time that you have come across my, one of my videos, then consider clicking on the red button which says subscribe and never miss anything important in the future. Shortly to explain it, well, they want to make you feel that you're using the iPhone 11 Pro or they just don't want the iPhone 11 users feel like they don't have something which is part of the older devices. So even on the iPhone 10, which has a pressure sensitive display, a 3D touch compatible one, you can simply just press and put your finger on an icon without applying any force whatsoever and still get the 3D touch actions. So you are using the haptic touch basically. You can still force press and it's going to do the same thing, but you can also long press like you would do on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. Now the question could be why exactly would Apple do something like this? I personally didn't know why they, what kind of intentions they had with this, but then I found out that it was because they wanted to make the battery life so much better and because the layer of the display was actually taking up actually a little bit more space than the classic display and they decided that the 3D touch isn't something that many people would notice or care about, even though I'm not really sure about that, but uh, they simply removed this, removed this layer and replaced it with a bigger battery and they organized all of the internal parts to make everything work better and so they put a bigger battery inside and accomplished a better battery life, which is great, we love it, but I don't know, I kind of still miss the 3D touch, I know. I will definitely do some comparisons once my iPhone 11 Pro Max actually arrives. I'm still waiting for the pre-orders, everything taking so long just because I took the bigger capacity and the space gray color as far as I was told they still don't have that or don't ship it uh, to where I live so I, it's kind of sad I actually have to wait just a little bit in like a week or two but then I'm just going to be publishing videos comparing and unboxing this device 
So make sure you stick around and see these videos because iPhone 11 Pro is a great display and has a really great performance. I mean, the iPhone 11 Pro has been awarded with some sort of display award for the best screen ever put into a smartphone, which is kind of debatable since they just removed the 3D touch, I guess, yeah, but it was, I mean, I like the display a lot, everything's good, but I still kind of miss the 3D touch. Okay, I think that I have explained this properly. If you feel like you have any questions that I would be able to answer, then leave them down below in the comment section. I want to say thanks a lot for watching, hit the like button if you like this content, and also subscribe for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys later in the next video. Peace out, guys.